It's the Ron and Fez Show, live on 106.7 WJFK, live on a Wednesday. Ron Bennington, Fez Wetley with you. It's as hot as Nad Sweat in this room tonight. It really is. We had the milk drinking contest going on, and Billy Staples and Rory, they're burning off so many calories trying to get the milk down. They've raised the temperature in this room to uh, mercury-like conditions. Do you think there's really the heat coming off of Billy? I think it's the heat coming off of Billy's giant stomach. That's amazing. Everyone here has ran into his stomach by accident because it's a foot out further than it should be. It's so distended. And, uh, you know, fat objects are closer than they appear. That's bizarre, though, that one person could cause that kind of heat in a room. Look how bad he's sweating. He was sweating it out there at the end. He's actually in worse shape now that he's drank the gallon of milk than when he was when he actually finished it off with a minute, ten seconds to spare. Now I got Odge. This makes you miss Florida, this heat, doesn't it? <laughs> really, really does. The swamp. You know what? Uh, I think uh, the hottest night I was ever in Florida at a drive-in movie trying to cool off around there. Did you ever go to the drive-ins in Florida, Fez? Yeah, we used to go when I was a little kid, and then when I was in high school, we would go there to drink. And wouldn't it be hot as hell down there at night? It'd just be awful. Yeah. And, you know, if you got the speakers hooked up to your window, yeah. you can't have the car on. We well, yeah. can't have the AC on. He the windows up. He, he, and plus, it's like, what, four movies or three movies. You can't <laughs> sit there and run the AC that long. You're going to run out of gas. So, yeah, those were really hot, sweaty nights, but a lot of fun for some reason. Rory just handed me a note that says that he has never been to a drive-in in his life. Rory's never been to a drive-in or drive-in movie. You know, I was trying to just think of this. Uh, do you even see any drive-in movies around anymore, Fez? I don't know if there's any drive-in theaters left. I think all the ones there were turned into flea markets or swap meets. You never went to one in your life, Rory? No, I never went to one, and I never actually even, like, saw one except when I was out in Ohio. I drove past one. I was like, wow, I should just go. Yeah. but It like, was still open? It was only open on, like, Friday nights. And, like, I think one time on Saturdays between, like, June and July, and that was it. You know, I saw something on uh, TV not too long ago about movies and how movies have changed. Because the regular theater, I know this is going to sound really weird to you, Roy, but, like, in the 70s, a regular theater would have one movie and then hold it there for, like, 30 weeks if it was a big hit movie. Right. Like, The Godfather literally stayed in the movies over a year. Wow. Yeah, no one expected Star Wars to be the sleeper hit that it was. So you would see in the newspaper, held over for 20th consecutive week. Well, that you was know, part of the ad. Yeah, the uh, like Star Wars, about the age that changed all that, Jaws was the one that really opened in a lot of theaters. But a lot of movies that were big only opened in you know a few theaters and kind of rolled out. It wasn't the whole, hey, it's Friday, everybody's going to go see the Matrix thing. If you lived in Iowa, you might not get to see The Matrix for another six months. Yeah, and now they have this thing where every Monday we're seeing who's the box office champion for the week. Right. You know, where before, and now those movies, they'll disappear as fast as they showed up. And before movies, if it was a hit, that's how you knew, because it would just stay there in right. the theater forever. Um, and the drive-ins would have a thing where there would be like one new movie and then two or three kind of B movies that you would never even see in the regular theaters. Yeah, they would put those out there. And the, the big movies would actually stay in the same theater for, like Ronnie said, up to 30 weeks, you know, over half a year. Right. So over six months, the movies could have so, been around. Yeah, if you wanted to see a lot of movies, you would go to the drive-in and see, like, you know, three or four titles in one week. It would be really cool because they give you something. If you, When I was a kid and we went to the drive-in, of course, you go in your pajamas in the station wagon, take your pillows with you because it's going to be dark when you get there. And they would have, like, a couple of cool, quick cartoons or something else. And then they'd have a couple of fun movies before they got to the main event. Now you really sound like the old guy at the Nickelodeon. <laughs> oh, we'd have a couple of cartoons and a newsreel. Uh, I know there's still drive-ins out there. They're just very, very few and far between. 866-277-4969. 866-277-4969. I will say this. I think we're missing something by not having drive-ins. I think it was... Uh, a really cool, fun place to go when you're young and you had nowhere else to party or you had nowhere else to get a beach. Yeah, true. 
I'll tell you, like, just uh, seeing it in movies now, like, you know, like in The Outsiders and stuff, and even in Greece, they were, it would look like so much fun. And I really wish, like, I grew up during those times. It was a blast. I would actually do this. Me and my friends would walk down the train tracks, and we'd go, and there was, like, a liquor store, and we used to wait outside. Now, we were walking, right? We'd wait outside, get an adult to go in and get us, like, wine and beer. And then we would go over and stand at where the movie theater was, because you could still hear through all the speakers, and the kids had set up like car seats there. And you would sit out front and get hammered. <laughs> and watch normally movies where you could see breasts. Really? I remember the Super Vixen movies were there. I saw a movie called, I think it's The Cheerleaders, that was uh, like early Porky stuff. You know what I mean? Like real right. Porky's type material. Now, see, I don't remember anything like that. I saw Flesh Gordon there in the uh, 70s. And it would be, uh, well, especially those Russ Myers Super Vixen movies were always huge uh, breasts. They're perfect for a drive-in. And I remember even being a kid driving by the drive-in, like, you know, going down the highway with my folks, and looking up and seeing breasts. And it was, like, exciting. <laughs> it was like seeing money. So great. And they didn't have any cops out there, like, why would the walking cops, around? Why would cops be out there? I mean, security guards. Like, they didn't have security guards. Like, just, you know, the sure. guy who runs a projector and the guy who checked you in. That was it. And trust me, if you were doing something wrong, you'd hear about it because people would start honking. Here's Sean. Sean, you're on the Ron Fez Show. Hey, Sean. Hey, guys. Yeah. How you doing? Um, there's two drive-ins left in Maryland. One's in uh, Baltimore County, southeastern Baltimore County. It's okay. Called Benji's. All right. And that's pretty cool. When, uh, but that one's the best. Uh, and the other one's up in, like, near Pennsylvania. But the Benji's is the one in uh, southeastern Baltimore County. And that's really, it's, it's really cool because they don't have the um, things you hang on the window anymore. You... you Tune it into your radio station. They got like a little uh, transmitter or something you pick up on your. Yeah, so uh, you don't have the little speaker anymore. No, because I guess people kept dropping off with them. So, uh, but it's pretty neat. I saw all five Planet of the Eight back in the seventies. Nice, the that's drive a great drive-in. Drive I say, yeah, but you yeah. would get to see all five at the same time, right? I mean, well, not all five. I mean, they came out. We, of course, we had this. Our family saw each one. Right. Work. But like sometimes tonight. it would be just like Planet of the Apes nights, and you would see them yeah, all. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And that and was the cartoons in between, and the yeah. uh, Three Stooges at this one right, right. now. That the Benjis are really great. They got a uh, website, so anybody right. wants to go up. Thanks, there. man. I always like right. the uh, concession right. stand commercial they'd run. That cartoon with the dance oh, yeah, of popcorn and soda. Yeah, that's great. All right, hey, see you later, bro. That would make me starving. I know something about a dancing hot dog makes you <laughs> hungry. Roy, hit this thing back up for me, would you, bro? Uh, Tyler, Tyler, you're on the Ron and Fez show. Hey, Tyler. Hey, guys, what's going on? Hey, buddy. I was calling to Driving in Winchester, Virginia. Really? Uh, went there with my girlfriend and saw Titanic. Wow, that's weird that they would show Titanic. Now, did it come out much after Titanic? No, it was when it was, when it was in the uh, the regular theater. Released no to it, right? Yeah. That's unusual. All right, thanks, man. Thank you. Bob. I didn't know if there was any still around. We ought to do a drive-in night. We'll get a bag and we'll get a case. We'll I'd, sit there and get whacked. I'd love to. I yeah. really, because I, I, I missed that whole part, like that whole thing. And I, I'd, I'd love to try to, you know, do it again. This was always a fun thing. You would take a van there and kind of park it backwards and open the back of the van. Okay. To be able to see it from there. 866-277-4969. Here's Kevin. Kevin, you're on the Run and Fest show. Hey, Kevin. Hey, Run and Fest. Hey, buddy. Bye. Hey, I just wanted to say uh, you guys have a great show. Yeah, we do. Um, uh, the reason I called was I heard you all talking about uh, trying to do a, to a uh, gallon of milk in an hour. Yeah. Well, I think that's nothing. I could do it in 10 minutes. If you can come in here tomorrow night and drink a gallon of milk in 10 minutes, we'll give you tickets to what, Fez? We'll give you tickets to the HF Festival coming up May 24th at RFK Stadium. Okay. Um. What, uh, what, when should I come? Tomorrow night? Yeah, hold on. I'm going to put you on hold and Royal Talk. All right. Tomorrow night you come in just what uh, Billy Staples did, a gallon of whole vitamin D milk. But he's got to do it in 10 minutes now. 10 minutes. No. Here is uh, Mark. Mark, you're on Ron Fez. Hello, Mark. What's up, Ron Fez? Yeah. Yeah, there used to be a place down in Mount Vernon that we used to go to back when we were younger that, that we used to sneak in, put four or five people in the trunk of the car, hang out, you know, when we got in there, drink some cold beers, stuff like that. You know, uh, I friends of mine would get in the trunk, not me. I don't get in the trunk of an effing car, Fezzy. I never would. It's ridiculous. I can't even ride in the bitch seat in the middle. <laughs> That freaks me out. Yeah, there's a cool place out in Arlington now um, called the Arlington Cinema and Draft House. 
Yeah. Where you could go have a couple beers. It's not the same cigars. thing. It, it's, it's not the same, but it's a good place to go. Yeah. They, I think they tried to replace drive-ins with those cinema draft houses. Well, they you know, serve nachos too. I, I mean, you know, uh, it, when they added all the different AMC theaters and stuff like that, that must have dro- knocked the drive-ins out. The other thing is, just imagine how much space you take up for a drive-in compared to a theater. Yeah, if you look at the, some of the drive-ins around, the ones that I knew growing up, they turned into flea markets. One I know is a drive-in church now. It's just a huge piece of land. One of them actually did turn into a multiplex. Sure, that would be the smart <laughs> angle to do. Oh, that's the one down on uh, 34th Street, right? Yeah. Yeah, I remember when it was there in 34th. And with that thing, actually, they put a building up there and started showing 13 different movies. Here's uh, St. Pete Ed. St. Pete Ed, you're on a Hey, St. Pete Ed. Hey, how's it going, boys? Hey, uh, I really enjoy your show. Yeah, it's good. Hey, I uh, want to ask Fez if he remembers the old 28th Street Drive-In down there. 28th Street Drive-In? In St. Yeah, Petersburg? That, yeah, it's right behind yeah. 34th Street. That's the one that you're talking about, Fez. Okay, yeah, that's, it was called 28th okay, Street. That was the most exotic weed on the golf, man. You used to go down there and get. And beer drinking, I'll tell you, that, that was the greatest outdoor bar in the world. I miss <laughs> that place. Yeah, everybody used to go. Now, Ed, Fez is saying that he doesn't remember where you can see R- R-rated movies in these places. You know, I don't even think anybody cared what the movie was, man. It was just one big party every night. Yeah. You could literally go in there and it would be fairly cheap and get whacked. They even had it. I remember they had it $2 a carload for a while. Oh, yeah. They'd always run those specials. All right. Thanks a lot, man. That was great. All right, guys. Thank you. Take care. Thanks a lot. All right. See you. Mikey D. writes in, Fuzzy, that he saw all the Apes movies at one uh, sitting at a drive-in in 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 Long Island. It was go eight for a day. Oh, very nice. Mikey D went there with Mason Reese and the kid who played Oliver. <laughs> and saw ten hours of eight movies. <laughs> oh, God. It really would be ten hours. Five, five of those films. Well, do you remember when they would run them to dawn sometimes? There would be some special thing? Oh, yeah. Yeah, That sometimes we would go um, as part of a church group. And yeah. that would be part of stay out all night with the church. And you go there until uh, dawn. You know what I saw? I saw Carrie at the drive-in. See, that's what I remember. when I was. Uh, see, I have two different memories of the drive-in. Going there when I was a little kid with my family in my pajamas. I never got to go with my family. I went with my neighbor's family. And my family didn't go out. I'm sorry. Nah, whatever. And then in high school, when we started going out, then I would only see horror movies. Like, I think the last drive-in movie I saw was the original Friday the 13th. Do you know what I saw when I was a little kid? I just thought of this. My sister took me to a cartoon. It was uh, her and her boyfriend and me. The cartoon was Fritz the Cat. Really? An X-rated cartoon. <laughs> and I was so little. I'm watching cartoons bang. And maybe that's why I have an anime fetish. <laughs> hey, you've discovered it. We've had a breakthrough tonight. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, I should call Billy's therapist since I don't have my own. Congratulations. I never thought of that. I saw Fritz the effing cat. <laughs> And he literally was the effing cat. Yeah, he was. Hey, uh, Sean. Sean, you're on the Ron and Fez show. Hey, Sean. Hey, how you doing, Fezzy? How you doing, Ron? Hey, buddy. Good. Hey, Ronnie, uh, in Philadelphia, right off past Young Avenue, there used to be a drive-in right in the middle. 61st of the Street. 61st Street drive-in. The yeah. sign's still nice. there. Yeah. When my dad would drive us to my grandmother's house there off of uh, Lindbergh Avenue, every night, every time we'd go by, they'd be showing some X-rated film. And that was the highlight of the night, driving by and seeing all these breaths jumping up and down on the screen in the middle of the jump. <laughs> you know, now I'm wondering, Fezzy, for you, maybe it was like a county law or a state law in Florida that you couldn't show. Maybe it was. Because well, I yeah. only remember, the older I got, I only remember horror films. And then when I was a little kid, we would see things like uh, Super Dad with Bob Crane or the, oh, they would show the Herbie the Love Bug movies. Right. We get to see all of those. Thanks, guys. All right, see you later. Thanks for the call. Drive-ins, maybe we ought to open one, man. I think it would be a hit. Who wouldn't want to do that? Who doesn't like to go sit outside and get whacked? <laughs> Actually, the first time I drank, the first time I got drunk, first beer I ever had was in a drive-in movie. Is that right? Yeah. With your buddies? Yeah. Yeah, they drove, and I drank. And they, they got the beer and everything, and it was like, all right, I'll try one of these. I hadn't had a beer before. It was love at first sip, wasn't it? I'll tell you what, I haven't stopped since. Ha, 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 ha.
<laughs> we had one kid, Stephen Glassburn. I remember him just wretching outside the car, just puking his guts out. And you know what? It was going on all around you. Everyone was drunk there. Yeah, it was everybody, such a big party. I wasn't a nine puking outside like you and your friends. <laughs> I held my own that night. I've had bad nights that night. I bet you held your own and the two guys that you were with. Road and road. Am I wrong? Let's move on. Okay. Also, the drive-in was the only place I ever drank wine. I used to drink wine there, too, because I would be in junior high school. We used to drink out front. I don't know why the whole thing. It was very cheap to get wine and uh, chase it with a quart of beer. That was my first thing. We would get that Boone's Farm wine. Yeah, I used to drink Boone's Farm, too. The Strawberry Hill, the Tickle Pink. <laughs> And there was one other one, right? Apple, some kind of apple. Yeah, apple wine, apple, apple hill. I, I don't know, remember. It was a Boone's Farm apple. Do they still have Boone's Farm? I don't know if I can get. If we open a drive-in, we're gonna have to bring back Boone's Farm too. I think they only serve Boone's Farm to children. <laughs> Here's Chris. Chris, you're on running first. Hi, Chris. Hey guys, what's up? Hey, buddy. Hey, I just wanted to let you know that they're still out there. I was out there one about uh, six or eight months ago with my wife. Uh, up in Pennsylvania, we saw Kiss of the Spider, Kiss of the Spider with that that Morgan Freeman movie. Yeah, and uh, and Crocodile Dundee too. <laughs> hey, uh, <laughs> what part of PA do you remember? Yeah, it was outside of uh, State College. I'm gonna guess that there are still a few out there, but there literally used to be thousands in this country. Oh, I know. I yeah. can remember going to them as a kid. Yeah, me too. I can think so. of three or four right around my own neighborhood. Growing up. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. All right, thanks a lot, man. And those are all gone now. They're all gone now. It's very weird when you think, oh, who cares whether there's a drive-in or not? But then when it's gone, it's like a part of us is kind of gone, you know? And then you, you turn around to a guy who's a little bit younger, like Rory, and now it's suddenly like we're talking about steam engines with him. Yeah, you can't explain how much fun it was. But did it? Did you know it was that much fun at the time, or you just took it as normal? We used to literally say, "There's nothing to do. Let's go to the drive-in." When in high school, when we would go and get drunk, then it was just, you know what? We need a place to park. Right. It That's could be anywhere. Gonna, it's going to place places any. We would either go there or we go to the beach. When I was a little kid, and I would go, and you'd get to sit up on the roof of the station wagon on the luggage rack. Yeah, that was the greatest day in the world. Your, your uncle be ring deep into you? No. Root and root again. I'm just trying to find out if you got touched. What is it, Rory? That uh, apple wine was called Boom, Boone's Apple Farm Wine. Apple Farm. Okay. Apple Farm. I was more of a Strawberry Hill guy, but I knew that there was an apple one. <laughs> it was all to, good. And I'm trying to think of this Tickle Me Pink or whatever you were calling it. The Tickle Pink was more of a champagne, I believe. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Maybe like a cold duck, even. Cold duck. <laughs> <laughs> it's disgusting. It really is bad. And then sometimes we bring in some uh, Mad Dog 2020. Here is uh, Tim. Tim, you're on Running Fez, a little, little MD. Yeah. Tim, you're on the air. Hey, Running Fez, how you guys doing? Hey, pal. What you got? Hey, um, I collect 16-millimeter films like you used to have in high school in the old days. And anytime you guys want to do a drive-in night, let me know because I've wow, got everything Fezzy. to it. Wow, Fezzy. I've what? got the drive-in speakers and uh, features and all kinds of what stuff. What if we did this? We set up in the parking lot. That oh, be, nice. That would be great. I do it. Um, Wendell do set it up a summertime. screen. Yeah, we'll yeah do I've, it. Got a, I've yeah. got a 10 by 10 foot screen. and. What movies do you have? Oh, man, I've got all kinds of old stuff. Um, um, you know, W.C. Fields, Marx Brothers. I've got the, a 15 minute uh, clock, you know, that does all the snack bar films and wow, you know, eight minutes until the show starts. And <laughs> this all is that too stuff. cool. Finally, Rory gets to go to a drive in. I can set him up with a drive-in speaker, and he can pull his car up. and. Yeah, you'll live it. Maybe you know, uh, we'll do it on a night where all Hefe is in. And, uh, you know, we'll just keep him on the other line. Sounds good. All right, and he can invite people out, and we'll have a big party during the show. Sounds all right, good. hold on. Roy's going to talk to you, okay? All right, take care, guys. All right. All right, thanks for the offer, bro. You know what? I like to collect something cool. I don't collect anything. Yeah, you need a collection. You, you need what? a hobby like that. You know what I feel like doing? Because I don't like to really collect, but I like to buy all Tim's stuff. And then tell people that's my collection. Make them an offer. When you buy it all at once, yes, you have a collection, but you're not really collecting. Yeah, I do. I collect once and that's it. <laughs>
I collect once, and then I show it off to my friends. The fun of collecting is the ongoing struggle, the hunt, the thrill of the chase, the looking for the stuff. I think the fun of the collection is making other people think that you have interest. That's what I'm after. I want people to go, I didn't know that side of Ron. I didn't know that he had a room full of thimbles. <laughs> We'll hey, hey, we'll 6 Let's let El Jefe do his work here. Uh, we'll be right back and end the show. It's the Ron Fez Show.